This is episode number 183 of the Mixology Talk podcast, and we are continuing our conversation around smoke and cocktails. Uh, last episode, we talked with bartender um, Ben Potts around all kinds of different ways uh, to implement smoke in cocktails, and today, we're gonna be going on a deep dive into wood, the different types of wood you can use for smoking, and who better than a barbecue pit master. So please welcome Malcolm Reed to the podcast. Welcome back to the Mixology Talk podcast. And uh, today we have a special guest, somebody I'm really excited to talk to um, as we dive into the wonderful world of smoke. And uh, today we have pit master, um, Malcolm Reed, um, who has quite a few different platforms that you're on. Uh, but man, I'm really excited to talk to you and, uh, and thanks for joining us. Well, hey, thanks for the invite. When I, when I saw Mixology, I was like, this is right up my alley, man. I, <laughs> I love a good cocktail. <laughs> yeah, and I, I assume you've probably been having a couple since uh, since COVID uh, broke out and everything. we got to find a way to cope through this. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue and cocktails, man. I think that's, that's a lot of people's go-tos right there. That's exactly right, man. Yeah, so um, so before we get into it, man, how did you get into uh, the wonderful world of smoking and, and, uh, and barbecue? Well, I'm from, I guess you'd say Memphis, Tennessee. I live in the Memphis region. And one of the, the world's biggest barbecue contests is Memphis and May. It's held every year in Memphis. And so the little towns that I grew up in, a town called South Haven, which is right outside of Memphis, they have these smaller competition barbecues. And so I've been going to them I'm all the way up. You know, my parents would go and we'd tag along and, I got old enough, started hanging out with my buddies, and we decided to start a barbecue team. And we just, it was like a big tailgate that was a party, and we would go and have a big, you know, a blast with it. And so the barbecue thing just kind of come natural. Mm -hmm. um, as I got older and went through college, you know, some of the guys dropped out. Me and my brother kind of kept Killer Hogs going. And, um, you know, here, here we are, I guess 20 years later, I've turned it into somewhat of a business of <laughs> doing barbecue, something that I love. You can't ask for anything better than that, man. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So um, when you talk about grilling and barbecuing, we kind of talked about this a little bit before, what kind of separates the two, um, the two I guess, different cooking styles? Well, the, the easiest way for me to, to explain it to someone new is grilling is you know cooking over higher heat where you're cooking a meat that's uh, usually open to the air. You can close the lid on it, but mainly it's, it's the cook time and the higher temperatures. So you think of steaks, hamburgers, hot dogs, things like that that you can grill pretty quick. That's grilling. Now, barbecue is kind of the art of doing it low and slow. It's, um, if you'll think a lot of like braising meat in the oven or dishes that take a long time to prepare, that's what we're doing on a barbecue pit. We're doing it outside, we're burning wood, so we pick up flavors from the different species of wood we're using, and we're just doing it slow, so those flavors are developed into the meat, it's breaking down the fats and all the connective tissue to where it's a real tender piece of meat, and it just takes a little time. So that's really the difference. You got a low and slow method, which is barbecued, and you got a hot and fast kind of, which is grilling. That's got the easiest it. way to look at it. All right, cool. And so if anybody's wondering why uh, I got a barbecue pit master on, on this podcast, hopefully you kind of get the idea now. We're going to be diving into wood as kind of a, a flavor, basically. And who better to talk to than a pit master? So um, when we talk about barbecue, like what are some of the most common types of wood that you guys use uh, for barbecue? Well, most of the ones that come to mind are going to be hickory and oak. Some of your hardwoods, those, you know, you even see some guys out west, they'll use mesquite, which is a real, like, pungent wood. It gives, you know, it can give meat a lot of flavor. Uh, some of them you can overdo it with. Um, I personally like to use a combination of some hardwoods. Like, I'll take my oak and hickory and mix it with some pecan or maybe some fruit wood like apple or cherry, uh, you know, or peach, something to give it some unique characteristics. And, it, you know, they do a lot of that with cocktails, aging in those wood barrels. You know, wine can pick up some of the, the flavors of the wood they use in the cask where they age the wine, too. But it, it works the same way with smoking, with imparting that smoke flavor into the, the meat or whatever. You know, if you're doing fish or meat or even vegetables, you can get smoke flavor into the food by exposing it to it in, in like a barbecue pit environment. Sure. Now, um, you mentioned a couple different hardwoods, um, and I'd love to kind of kind of go a little bit deeper on this um, and sure. kind of talk about the flavor profiles that each one kind of impart. 
Um, if let's say you were doing a barbecue solely of that wood, uh, what would that flavor look like? So um, one of the first ones you mentioned was kind of hickory. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the traditional barbecue wood. Um, you know, hickory it's got a strong flavor. You know, you pick up you know really um, some of the deep notes. Um, hickory is really great for large cuts of meat. Like if you think of uh, big big cuts of beef, like whole roast, or you know the the whole you know shoulder of a pork or a whole hog or something like uh, you know um, larger cuts do really good with hickory because it's it's a stronger wood flavor. But it, you know, on a big meat, it doesn't, you know, it, it's got more space to absorb it. So it really gives it some really traditional barbecue flavors. Uh, you know, some of the milder woods doesn't, you know, they don't really stick to it as well. So you have to, um, you know, use those for thinner cuts of meat where you just want slight flavor. That's why you see a lot of fish and stuff, done different types of wood. Sure. And then, um, so let's, let's talk about maybe some heavy style wood, some one that has a lot of flavor. Um, what kind of comes to mind? Uh, and what are some of those kind of flavors that are kind of how they differ a little bit? Well, um, I would say one that really comes is the post oak flavor they use in Texas a lot. When people think of Texas barbecue, they think of those um, really heavy smoke where, the, where, where they don't use a lot of ingredients as seasoning. It's mainly salt and pepper, but they let that post oak wood drive the flavor. And that's really, you know, it, gives, it really gives it a strong wood smoke flavor. But then you also have a region that has pecan wood. Mm -hmm. and pecan's like you get the nuttierness from it. It's not as heavy as a hickory or um, the post oak, but it's still considered a hard wood. And so it really, you pick up some of the flavors that you would think would traditionally be associated with pecan. It's a little, it's not really fruity, but it's, you know, it's got a mildness to it, a nuttiness to it that, that I really like. Sure. And then you mentioned um, like cherry and some of the other uh, fruit woods. Um, do, is that, do those fruit kind of notes actually, are they present in some of the smoke? You definitely get them through the smoke. Um, that's where you're going to get your sweetness from. Uh, you know, if you think of apple and, it, you know, a, a really ripe, a really good apple having that sweet flavor, you get a little bit of the tartness from it. You can pick that up in the wood. The cherry has a deeper flavor. It's not, you know, it's not heavy, but it also, you know, it brings some color to your meat. Uh, you can really see in the smoke ring the way the chemicals break down in the meat. A cherry wood will give you a real reddish color on your smoke ring. And then peach, for example, peach is a great flavor that we use when we go over to uh, the Georgia or, you know, the really eastern, southeastern part of the United States and do barbecue contests. Those people are used to using peach wood a lot. And so you pick up those different flavors of the peach fruit in that wood. Yeah. And how important is it to kind of tie those flavors back into like what you're actually cooking? Like, do you kind of, if you're doing an apple wood, do you, do you reach for a lot of either apple focused spices or kind of incorporate apple again to kind of reinforce that or use it more as kind of a standalone flavor? Well, you, you can. Um, what, what I like to do is mix the wood and the spices. So you get the combinations, you get the fruitiness or the sweetness from the apple wood, but you also incorporate a little bit of hickory wood or a little bit of pecan to balance it out with a little bit heavier smoke. And then when you're using your ingredients, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the barbecue ingredients are this, the same across the board. It's mainly, you know, your salt peppers and then they'll have some chilies in them and mm -hmm. might get some cumin for some smokiness. And then, you know, they're just different flavors that go with barbecue. There's a ton of different good rubs out there, but all of them have kind of the same characteristics. So you can play with your smoke and your seasoning ingredients and come up with these good combinations that not necessarily are all in the same family. Got it. Okay. So it's all about kind of experimentation and yeah, having a, a lot of variety. Yeah, you know, and wood, using wood in barbecue is really a kind of a personal uh, preference. Like you might really like the flavors you get from fruit wood, but then you, or you might really want something that's really heavy smoke to make some authentic like Texas style barbecue. So it's kind of up to, you know, up to you, whatever you want to do, there's a wood or some flavors out there that'll work to get to your preference. Yeah. And I imagine a lot of it's probably pretty regional too, right? Like, like you were saying out West, we got a lot of mesquite out here. Um, I, I'm actually out in California. Um, but I remember growing up in like Flagstaff, um, mesquite was kind of our cornerstone um, hardwood out there. Um, and, and you're right, it, it definitely has a much different nose on it than like your oaks or anything like that, too. Yeah, the wood, and it really is a regional thing. People, people have um, traditionally barbecued with whatever meat, whatever wood they had around them. 
You know, it's not like you would go to the store and, and buy apple wood or buy hickory. You know, most of the time it was some trees that fell or, and, you know, that somebody had on a property or you might have had on your property that you took and dried a little, let them age out. And that's what you used for smoking. Uh, you know, it wasn't, a lot of states don't let you ship certain species of wood because there's, you know, you have these problems with they might, you know, uh, bring an invasive species in from another state. So they're really strict about what comes in. So there's different rules and regulations. So that's what really, really why wood's kind of a regional thing. And you see people use different types in different parts of the country. Got it. Got it. That makes a ton of sense. Um, so have you experimented with some other kind of less common woods in your uh, barbecue journey? I've tried a lot of different kinds. <laughs> you know, some of my favorite, I mean, uh, maple wood's really great. Um, I've actually had some people send me some wine barrels that were cut up into, you know, smoking chunks. And it, you got the flavors from the wine that mixed with that oak barrel. Sure. And so that's really, really great. Um, I've, I've played with some pimento wood from down in Jamaica. And that I, I love to do jerk stuff. And, you know, that's oh, yeah. really, it puts a really good flavor on, on jerk chicken. I mean, it's, it's hard. You can't, well, you can't produce it in the United States. You don't see much pimento wood. But if you get, ever get a chance to get a hold of some, I really really highly recommend it yeah and it, it does that kind of really bring bring back that whole authentic flavor that you can kind of only get there it, you're right and that's you know when you go to jamaica and you you're getting the the roadside jerk chicken from the open top drum and it's all the flavor the spices they use and that pimento wood they're using same thing goes if you're going out west and you're getting you know uh some authentic you know tacos or something where they're using mesquite or something I mean, or or tri-tip in California where they're, you know, <laughs> using the red oak. That's, 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 that's flavor we don't see here, you know, and that's, that's, so it's unique to those regions. Sure. Absolutely. I, it's funny cause we love our tri, I love my tri-tip out here. That's for sure. Uh, I've been eating it for like 20 years and, and then all of a sudden it got crazy expensive. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> it's hard to find here. We have to mail order it in. Oh, wow. We should get like a, a meat exchange going. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, so with, with all that, um, is there any kind of woods that you would recommend kind of avoiding um, either for flavor or for basically health concerns? Well, the health concerns, yeah, you definitely don't want to cook with treated wood. <laughs> so if you, if you think you're going to go bust up some, you know, some construction lumber or some pallets or something like that, you don't want to do that because you don't know what that wood's been treated with. But, um, you know, the, the rule with wood is typically you want something that has lower moisture content. And that's why we dry, dry wood. People, you know, they don't want to burn green wood a lot. But high moisture wood, if you think of like fir trees, like Christmas type trees or aspen or you know, pine trees, something that's got super high moisture content. Those trees don't do well for smoking, and they actually produce uh, some other flavors in them that are they're almost, you know, don't, not edible, basically, when you burn them. Now, I have seen, you can use, like, some cedar planks, but they're not burning those planks. They're just laying the meat on it inside the, the cook chamber to get some flavor from it. So that's okay, but when you're talking about trying to burn it, it doesn't do well at all. And yeah. so that would stay away from anything that's, you know, pretty much a, a tr evergreen tree. You don't want to cook with it. Okay. That's a good rule of thumb. So evergreens stay away from, because um, to your point, it's going to just throw a lot of off flavors. I mean, when I think of uh, pine, I do a lot of woodworking. Um, so when I think of pine, I think of resin. Like that thing is yeah. got so much pitch in it and so much resin that just kind of, um, I can't imagine that's got to be good for smoke. You're right. And, and it's, some of it can be caustic even, you know, if it's burned in the right environment, you try to put it on food, you know, it could be dangerous to you. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I remember on California beaches where I grew up, uh, we would, we would raid our normal uh, or our grocery store for pallets, burn them out there. And uh, me being a dumb 18 year old, you know, I remember grilling on it and thinking about that now, like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you, definitely, probably, you definitely want to know where your wood comes from. I mean, that's, you know, because you don't want a chance there being any chemicals on it or, you know, metal in it that might give something off when you burn it. Like if you busted up pallets, you know, it's got nails in it. You don't know what those nails are made out of. Sure. Or anything like that. It's, yeah, it's good yeah. to be, you know, kind of minded and thinking that, what, you know, what's, what's going into the smoke you're creating or the heat you're creating. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, it wasn't so much of a concern uh, when I was 18, but I think people just start <laughs> understanding, you know, like, this, 
you need to think about what you're putting in your body uh, for sure. I'll so. put some of those bonfires. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, you have a couple beers in you, you're not exactly, you know, uh, thinking about that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so you mentioned a couple of um, favorite combinations of flavors of, of hardwoods. What are some of your, like, maybe top three, like, combos of, of woods that you like to use um, in grill or barbecue? Well, you're – when I go to a contest, I usually bring three types of wood. I'll bring um, hickory chunks, pecan chunks, and cherry chunks. And I like the moisture content to be down below, you know, 17, 18% moisture in them. So you can actually get, like, go to the um, Home Depot or Lowe's or some hardware store and get a moisture meter that you can put up against the wood so you can tell how, you know, the moisture content of it. But it's because I want it to produce smoke, but I don't want it to have – any of the um, the excess, uh, I guess you would call them. It's just the moisture that gets in it. That's what burns out. I'm trying. I'm, I'm at a loss for the word on what it's called. But but you you know you don't want you don't want the off putting agents that come off of it. You want it to burn and smoke and give the give the aroma of the wood. But you don't want to get all the additives that could be in that wood and not being properly dry. Got it. Okay, cool. So, um, perfect. You're not going to go wrong. Cherry, pecan, and hickory. Cherry, pecan, and hickory. Perfect. And then, uh, do you have, I, I know they sell those little tiny bags of, like, chips, like wood chips at, like, uh, barbecue stores, and even, I think, maybe even Home Depot in some of their areas and stuff like that. Is that something you would recommend if somebody's using, like, a small amount of that? Well, I, those will burn up really fast, so you don't get much smoke off of them. Okay. So what you can do, and what I do, is make smoke bombs with them. And it's basically where you make a pouch. You can use aluminum foil, or they make little tin pans with lids that you can actually put your wood chips in. Mm -hmm. um, you can moisten those up a little bit to slow them down. That's what, you know, some people will like soak them in a little bit of a water just to slow them down a little bit. But if you put them in like what I call a smoke bomb and you poke a few holes in the top of it and you like that, it'll, it'll slow smoke to give you some flavor from those chips. But if you just go throw in handfuls of those chips on, they're just immediately going to burn up. Got it. Yeah. Cause they're probably high surface area and they've already dried out almost completely. So um, there's probably more heat than smoke. That's exactly that right. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, and then you said if you're going to, and then, um, so, um, one of the other things I'm just kind of thinking about how to, how to apply all this to cocktails. Um, and, uh, it sounds like stay away from evergreen woods. First of all, um, uh, just in general, they throw off a lot of kind of off, off flavors, um, reach for some of the harder style woods. Uh, your favorites are hickory, pecan, cherry. Um, if you can find it in bigger logs, that's probably the best and kind of break them down in a smaller, maybe chunks because if somebody's using this behind the bar they're not going to have you know a whole a whole log to use they'll probably turn it down to smaller pieces sure. you know probably a couple of days maybe a week beforehand um and then if it's too dry they could probably hydrate it with some form of liquid maybe draw some inspiration from behind me here <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a lot of fun <laughs> right exactly so maybe instead of using water they could hydrate it with um like a nice dark jamaican rum or you know, uh, maybe even like a really strong tea or something like that. So now we're wine or wine or beer or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so now we have a whole different spectrum of kind of a smoke flavor and elements that they could apply to cocktails. Um, and then using possibly even, uh, fruit woods to kind of marry up with any kind of like fruity style, like cocktails or brandies or anything that has a fruit focus to it. Um, I'm trying to synthesize all this great information and see how I would do it. Um, but that sounds like a lot of fun, man. <laughs> now, we haven't touched on it, but, you know, there's a whole big market now out there for different kinds of wood pellets. And for using them in cocktails, they would, be, they would work really well because you could use them indoors. Um, you mm -hmm. know, they have, uh, I'm not familiar with all the different smoking apparatuses there are for make, making uh, cocktails. But um, the pellets do really well because they're burned in kind of a little fire pot inside the smoker. And it's really a controlled environment. So okay. you're not actually having to build a roaring fire to get the wood to smoke, you know, to get the, the goodness from it. Sure. You can use these compressed pellets. And they're doing a lot with them with different flavors. So you can find some different combinations or it would be easier to source 
uh, multiple different varieties and not have to have whole logs or whole chunks. Sure. You know, you could have a you know you could have a can of you know maple, cherry, apple, all these different flavors that you could play with uh, behind the bar. Yeah, so that's a really good point. I was actually going to ask you about that because um, one of the things that we use behind the bar is um, called a smoking gun. It has a really tiny chamber. Think of it like a pipe, basically, with a hose that re- goes into a glass. Um, and it creates a bit of a vacuum and sucks it into the, to the glass area, and you capture it behind glass and you put your cocktail in it. Um, so with the pellets, I imagine they're probably – Pretty small, right? They are. Yeah. If you think of uh, seen rabbit food, they kind of look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, and then to your point, you know, um, you could kind of use a couple different varieties of the pellet. Um, and then there's no real need to hydrate these then, correct? Or would that still be a fun? No, experiment? not at all. They're, they're set to... That they're set to really burn up and be really efficient. They don't, they don't leave a lot of ash behind. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're really, they're, they're really a safer alternative is what they're pitching pellets as a lot. Uh, pellets have been around a long time. They used to heat them, uh, they used them to heat homes up north where they would throw all kinds of species in there because it's not, you know, we're not getting the smoke from that. That's outdoors. You're just getting the heat, the BTUs from it. So they, you know, and I guess I wouldn't say recently, but within the past 20, 30 years, they started realizing they could use uh, pellets for cooking as well. And so that's how it come into the barbecue world. And they're super efficient. They've got really good flavors. Um, barbecue purists don't like them because you're not building a roaring fire, burning real wood. But, you know, from a standpoint, from flavor and ease, and people really get new to getting into smoking or playing with different kinds of woods, the pellets are a great market and great avenue for them. I use them all the time. I have, you know, I love them. My wife, it's easy for my wife to go out and start the pellet grill. She's not into building a big fire and feeding it sticks or anything, you know, logs of wood. But she can run the pellet grill. So I think there's a place for them and it's really worth exploring for making cocktails too. Great. Yeah. And um, is there any particular brand that you like uh, is kind of your go-to brand for, for pellets? Um, you know, I, I have used all of them. Um, you know, there's the first company that comes to mind is Traeger because they've, they've been out the longest and you've probably seen them everywhere. Mm-hmm. They're really big out West. I think they're from, you know, now they're in Salt Lake city. I think it's their headquarters. So they're, you know, Traeger's, Probably the biggest one going, but there's some other great ones out there. Barbecuers Delight makes some really good pellets. Uh, B&B Charcoal makes some really good pellets. There's a company called Lumberjack. There's a, there's a ton of them, and, they're, and you're going to see more and more of them. Um, when you go to hardware stores or places where you buy charcoal and wood, most of them will have a pellet section now, too. Very cool. Well, this is going to make it a lot easier to experiment with. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could, you know, pellets would be a good place to find the flavors that you like because you could try so many different ones really easy. And then if you wanted to experiment with trying actual hard wood to see if you, you know, you, you found the difference and you wanted more smoke from it, you could try the hard wood. But um, from behind the bar standpoint, it's going to be hard to, you know, the pellets would be hard to beat. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. I think that's probably where a lot of people are going to lean to. If, if I had to think about this process and kind of working behind a busy bar, I think the, the pellets are kind of the way to go. Um, perfect. Yeah, well, I'll include links to all those, um, those companies in the show notes for sure. Um, and before we go, uh, I got to say, I got to tell everybody, um, I, I found your website uh, and your YouTube videos before we, I reached out to you. And uh, your channel is awesome, man. I, lo- I love watching kind of you interact with grilling and barbecuing, and, and it's very contagious. And if, if anybody's hungry, uh, I would not recommend watching your videos because I was starving after it. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, but definitely want to check out um, his YouTube channel. Um, so would you mind telling us kind of um, your YouTube channel and anything else you'd like to promote? Sure. Well, I, I have How to BBQ Right on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter, the whole thing. How to BBQ Right. Um, and it's pretty much I'm sharing the recipes that I've learned to cook on the barbecue grill. And as I learn more, I'm just sharing them with everybody else. And I hope people can take those recipes and, and impress their friends and family and, you know, all that good stuff. It's it's a learning journey for me and, and me and my wife, Rochelle, have a lot of fun with it. We, you know, we also do a podcast and we, um, you know, we're, we have an online store where we sell some of our products and some of our buddy stuff. And it's, you know, it's, it's quite a business that, that, you know, keeps us busy. 
That's amazing, man. Well, uh, I, like I said, Malcolm, I can't thank you enough for your time and uh, your expertise. I learned a ton, and uh, I think I'm definitely going to go experiment with some of those uh, those pellets you recommended. Hey, well, hey, the greatest part, it's like barbecue. You get to have fun tasting at the end. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Well, thanks again, man, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a good one. So thanks again to Malcolm for joining us and lending his expertise and knowledge around all things smoke and wood. I know I learned a ton in this podcast and I am going to be buying some of those pellets because I want to try a bunch of different flavor combinations for smoke cocktails. Um, So yeah, definitely go check him out on YouTube. I warn you though, it is his love and passion for barbecue is contagious. So if you need another hobby, I would highly recommend going to check it out. At the, at the very least, you're going to end up with some really, really good barbecue uh, tips from him as well. So uh, we'll have some more podcasts for you in the future, but I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and uh, having a couple cocktails along the way. Cheers, everyone.